So listen, I wanted to talk to you really briefly about a piece of gear that I picked up that proved to be something very useful as I was trying to transition from using a traditional keyboard to more of a MIDI controller uh, in my keyboard rig on stage. And so it was really helpful to me. Uh, it's something called a Piano Box Pro. It's created by a company called MIDI Tech. Uh, and uh, it's just basically a sound module. It proved to be very useful to me, so I thought I'd do a quick video as it might be something that you'd find useful as well. All right, so let's get into it. So listen, maybe you're wondering, well, why would you use something like this Piano Box Pro? You know, what's the benefit of it, right? Well, I had a unique challenge and maybe, you know, you kind of struggled with the same issue. But I wanted to transition from a traditional keyboard to using a MIDI controller on stage uh, instead. Uh, and there was a number of reasons for why I wanted to do that. I have used uh, traditional keyboards and, and let me explain what I mean by that. I'm just talking about just your basic keyboard. Uh, that has internal sounds in it, right? Something that is dedicated and that's going to generate your sounds for you. Uh, I have been using on stage for over seven years now a computer inside of my keyboard rig, basically. So I'm running like main stage with my keyboard rig and that's where the majority of my sounds come from. So as far as a traditional piano is concerned, I found that I really wasn't using the sounds that were in, you know, in that piano. Uh, maybe there's a couple of, uh, you know, roads or a couple of pianos or something like that. And they are basically layered in with main stage. So it wasn't like the sound that was being generated from the keyboard was all that important to me. Not since I had really been integrating main stage into my, into my rig. With the traditional keyboards, um, basically they weren't set up so much to be controllers. Of course, you could find things and you could kind of set your knobs and faders, depending on how many knobs and faders you actually had. You could set them, but they weren't really geared towards that job in particular. Whereas with a controller, it was more suited to control things like main stage or Ableton Live. It had more knobs, it had more faders on it. There was more that you could do with it from a control standpoint, uh, hence the name MIDI controller, uh, but they did not have any internal sounds. And so why is that a big deal if you're using main stage? Well, one of the things that I was always a little bit concerned about was I didn't want the computer to ever crash during a live performance on stage or in the middle of a worship set, wherein if the computer crashed, I lost all of my sound. So that was my reason uh, for really the biggest reason why I was still holding on to a traditional keyboard. Now, I should say that in the seven years or more that I've used a computer on stage with my uh, rig, I've never had the computer crash on me during a performance. I've had some user error issues come up, like maybe I forgot to plug in my computer or my laptop and, and maybe midway through the set it lost power or something like that. You know, things like that have happened, uh, but again, the concern that if all I have is a computer generating my sound and something were to happen during the performance with that computer, that was concerning to me. So I wanted to address that issue. I wanted to be able to go and transition completely to a MIDI controller on stage because it was better at controlling the software uh, that I was utilizing. And I just wanted the choice. I wanted to have my rig set up the way that I wanted it to be set up. Uh, I wanted to play what I wanted to play. I wanted to use, whether it be a keyboard, uh, a MIDI controller, or my favorite synth, I just wanted that choice. I wanted to be able to pick you know, kind of what I wanted. And I didn't want there to be limitations on that. And so um, I had a favorite. My favorite was the Arturia MK2, the uh, 88 key uh, key lap. And uh, I really just wanted that in my rig when it came time to make some changes and to get another keyboard. Uh, I just didn't want to go with the traditional keyboard. And I, I mean, I've kind of had just about everything, uh, you know, the Motif, uh, I've, I've had chord keyboards, I've, you know, I've had uh, rolling keyboards. And they're all great, you know, but I knew that because of my workflow over the last seven or so years with Mainstage, I knew I wasn't going to use the sounds. And so I, I really just kind of wanted to play something that I really felt comfortable and that I liked to play. So that's what brought me to this place of trying to find a sound module that would help me to get the best of both worlds. I could have a MIDI controller for what I needed to do controlling my uh, Mainstage software or whatever it is that, that, you know, I may have been using. And I still had that backup that if the computer failed, something would still be generating sound for me. Uh, and that's where this Piano Box Pro came in. And I found it to be very, very useful. Uh, and uh, I thought it was worth sharing uh, with you guys. So uh, let's take a look at it. All right, so this is our Piano Box Pro. 
Um, and I'm just going to pull main stage out of my mix so that you can kind of hear uh, the sounds that are generated here. Basically, it's just a sound module. That's basically all this is. It's basically just a sound module. And this is not that common these days. Back in the day, it used to be that you could buy different sound modules and this would allow you to have uh, just a couple keyboards, if you will, maybe in your project studio. And then you would have a rack system of all of these different sound modules, maybe the Roland 3080 or a Triton module or whatever it was, right? And it gave you the flexibility to have multiple keyboards in your rig without taking up as much space because one keyboard was triggering these different modules via MIDI through your computer. Um, but these days, with computer laptops coming into the scene, and there's barely any modern worship set that you can see without a laptop somewhere integrated into that uh, setup, um, these days it's harder to find sound modules. And again, if I made the transition to a MIDI controller that did not have a sound bank, I needed something just to make sure that I had that extra security blanket of something being able to generate sound or tone for me. And so this piano box, I found it on Amazon and I was quite surprised because the road that I was getting ready to go down was just to find one of those old school modules, maybe something made by Korg or Kurzweil or something like that, just a module that would allow me, you know, it didn't matter how old it was, I just needed something that was gonna generate some piano tone that I could configure into my keyboard rig. Uh, so that I would have that. Uh, but I ended up finding this on Amazon and I thought, man, this is a bonus because it's a newly manufactured piece of gear. Uh, it's, it's the right size, the right construction and everything for what we needed to do. Uh, I mean, this is great. It's very well constructed. It's, a, it's inside of a metal housing. Um, and it basically is a module that has uh, your 100, 128 GM sounds, which are basically the standard general MIDI sounds. So basic pianos, guitars, strings, all of those things that you would typically get on a keyboard. And then also as a bonus, it also has a sound bank from a company called Emu. And I remember them from back in the day. They were another one of the companies that built those rack mount uh, sound modules uh, that gave you access to extra sounds or extra keyboards or more external keyboards. Um, and so I remember the EMU sound module, so this was kind of like a bonus because it meant that I wasn't going to get just your general generic type sounds, but but at least I felt a little bit better or I felt better about the fact that at least it's a reputable company that was that was addressing one of their modules. And so this gives you 128 GM sounds. It also gives you 64 sounds from the EMU sound bank. Uh, it has some drum patches that are able to be triggered in that as well. I would not use those during the worship set, of course, but um, just to let you know that it does have, you know, those general MIDI sounds that are typical for a general MIDI setup. Um, so with the GM bank, just to kind of audition some of that stuff. So for a piano, it's just a piano. This isn't intended to be the same sound quality that you get from a traditional keyboard, and certainly not from something like a software sense, you know, from main stage or something that you have on your laptop. Um, but it did serve the purpose of being uh, a unit that I could use that would give me sound if anything ever happened on stage. So it's great for that purpose. Um, and you can cycle through the different sounds that it has. You know, so I mean, and it, it's great. I mean, it's great for doing what it needs to do, and then you know outside of the GM bank you had 128 sounds in the GM bank and then you also have the sounds that are found in the um, in the emu bank so and there were 64 sounds in that so you know your basic piano um, much better sound than piano uh, in the emu bank but again this was great for what I needed I didn't need it to be it wasn't going to ever be the centerpiece of my rig main stage and my software synthesizers were always going to be the thing dealing with you know all of that uh, but this gives me the ability now to choose a MIDI controller as opposed to a uh, a traditional keyboard which could have been a lot more pricey so 
Um, the benefits here of being able to use this sound module with the controller is now the controller, you've got more choices for what you can use inside of your, you know, worship rig, you know, however you're going to set that up. Uh, you've got, uh, it's, it's more cost effective to go to a controller, you know, uh, and this isn't to say that you may not want to do, you know, a traditional keyboard. Again, for me, when it came time to make that change or to upgrade some gear, I really wanted to go to a MIDI controller because of how it was going to be more in alignment with me using main stage. I got knobs, I got faders that came along with that. There's other things, of course, that we can purchase. Um, for a long time, I used the Korg Nano uh, along with my Motif, and that gave me knobs and faders to be able to uh, control things because the Motif just didn't have enough of them to, to really get the most out of what main stage was offering. Um, so all those things come into play. Uh, so it's more cost effective for me. This actually, this Arturia MK2 was my, it's my favorite thing to play. I mean, I have one at home in my home studio and it's just my favorite keyboard to play. The MIDI controller, the key bed on it. Uh, I love the way the keys feel. Um, it's just, it's great for me. And I, I just wanted to have that inside of my rig. The only problem that I had to solve was that I, I wanted it to be able to generate sounds and it just didn't have sounds in it. So this was a way of being able to utilize this inside the set and have something that was completely separate from my computer that was going to generate sound uh, for me for when I needed that to happen. Uh, you got to think about this too. Sometimes those keyboards can cost you anywhere from, you know, whatever, you know, $1,700, $2,000 or more. And I didn't want to spend that kind of money if I really wasn't utilizing the sounds. And if I had that kind of budget, you know, for me, I'd rather make sure I had my computer set uh, maybe there was some software some gear so it gives you more choices maybe you're just starting out and you don't even have the computer in play yet right and so you know two grand on just a keyboard as opposed to you know two grand on getting you a, a nice laptop uh to to run the rig and then maybe a midi controller for you know seven hundred dollars eight hundred dollars or you know it just gives you that flexibility and I think as worship leaders you got to have that flexibility uh, maybe this money is coming out of pocket for you maybe it's a budget that your church you know is is giving you to, to make some purchases and so anyways you got to be a good steward of that and just you know make sure you've thought through what the choices are and what you're going to get and what's going to best uh, solve uh, for the problems or the situations uh, that you may have and the way that you want to play uh, so this piano box pro was great uh, it, it gave me the flexibility of having dedicated sounds from something other than my computer and allowed me the ability to feel comfortable transitioning from a traditional keyboard and using just a MIDI controller inside of my inside of my rig. Uh, I can't say enough about how much I love playing this particular uh, keyboard and the control that it gives me over, you know, main stage. Most times for me, I'm going to layer in main stage with what I'm playing. So I love using this thing um, and it's just, it was a great solution for what I needed to do. For the connectivity on the Piano Box Pro, you basically have two quarter inch jacks um, uh, that are coming out left and right. Um, you've got your USB connection that's going to connect to whatever device you're you know connecting to. Uh, and then you have this uh, old school five pin MIDI in and out uh, situation. And so that's actually how I'm connecting to my MIDI controller. Uh, the reason being is because the MIDI controller is connected on its USB port to my computer. And then on the uh, five pin MIDI in is connected to the Piano Box Pro. So now this allows me the ability to play uh, and still generate uh, MIDI notes to the computer as well as simultaneously uh, generate MIDI notes uh, going to the Piano Box Pro. So now I've got that layer of instrumentation there, right? For 
my why. And again, you got to know why you're doing, you know, whatever you're doing. I just wanted something to uh, kind of layer in uh, and something to be a backup if, if something went down with my computer. Um, and so I think that this is a great solution. Uh, it has uh, even reverb controls on it where you can uh, generate, uh, you know, a little bit of reverb around your sound. Stage, out of that mix. So, so I'm happy with it. I think it actually is a, a great, um, uh, a great module for what for the purposes that I intended it for. It gave me flexibility with the choices that I could make as far as what I wanted to use to uh, be the centerpiece of my piano rig. It was very cost effective to get my hands on this, only 100, 130, 140 bucks. Uh, this was perfect for what I needed it to do. So guys, listen, thanks for watching. This thing was a very useful tool for me and I'm hoping that maybe uh, it gives you some ideas about what you might do inside of your keyboard rig. If you like the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll see you in the next video.